Okay, 18. Okay, so this one has um, some information more in the superficial dermis, um, and then some uh, dermal edema that you can see as well. Um, at higher power, the inflammation was, was densely neutrophilic. Um, so I would think sweets for this one. Um, I'm assuming a lot of this chapter is going to use the vasculitis um, associated changes with sweets that I think are, are um, generally favored to be like more reactive than, than primary and, and long standing lesions. Um, some of the vessel here look maybe a little bit demodest, but I didn't see for anything vasculitis. Good, excellent. Yes, this is this is fits really nicely for sweet syndrome, um, uh, febrile neutrophilic dermatosis, and I like that you pointed out not only the fact that we've got a dense dermal collection of neutrophils, but also that we have really prominent papillary dermal edema. I mean, look at how loose and pale and fluffy that papillary dermis is. And if you, especially if you go out and compare like to the skin away from it, it looks, this is normal papillary dermis. This is edematous papillary dermis. It really get you know, as you guys know, these are like very edematous, juicy, uh, reddish, you know, lesions clinically. And the reason they have that puffy, juicy look is from all that edema. And then they're rich in neutrophils. And like you said, sometimes you can see, there are some people, I think classically people say you should not have vasculitis in sweets. Well, I tell you, I've seen things that fit perfectly for sweets and definitely had vasculitis, to my eye at least. Um, I do think though that sometimes it, it can be a little hard to tell like what's vasculitis versus neutrophils coming out of blood vessels. Because guess what? That's how the neutrophils get into the dermis. They have to come out of the vessel, right? They're, you can see them here, they're filling the vessel and then they use diapedesis to get out of the vessel. And so when you have a billion neutrophils somewhere, yeah, it's going to look like they're coming out of the vessel wall because they are. And sometimes it's hard to tell if the vessel is actually vasculitic or not. So, you know, I would say that most of the time you don't see like frank fibrinoid necrosis of the vessel wall, but neutrophils and some dust sometimes, I feel like I've seen that multiple times in sweets. So that alone doesn't hold me back from sweets. But I will say that one thing is that if you see vasculitis like changes, it should be within the infiltrate area. If I start seeing you know, uh, little vessels away from the main area. Now, we don't always get a nice biopsy like this that gives us both. A lot of times it's a punch and the whole thing looks like sweets. But if I started seeing vasculitis away from the sheets of neutrophils, then I might get start to get worried that maybe this is actually a vasculitic process that is just getting a pustule-like area. And then that would be worrisome for like systemic vasculitis. Also, of course, the clinical helps because sweets has, you know, these discrete like juicy lesions. And I feel like vasculitis has kind of a different um, picture. So if you, in real life, if you had some time where you were concerned between sweets and vasculitis clinically, if you can biopsy one of the juicy uh, uh, demodus nodules and also biopsy an area that looked kind of purpuric but not edematous away from one of those nodules, that might be helpful because if I saw like an earlier area that didn't have a lot of neutrophils but had vasculitis, then that would support that maybe this is not sweets and is actually vasculitis. And of course, infection has to be ruled out, but usually these are so distinct clinically and you guys clinically know this is going to be sweets. And then we see this and we say, yep, it, it fits perfectly with, with sweets. But in, of course, we do want to make sure that we're not missing an infectious process. And then we don't have an example of histiocytoid sweets to show, but sometimes sweets can look more like histiocytes than like neutrophils. And those cases can really closely overlap leukemia cutis. And are, I find them still very challenging, even though I've seen multiple cases, those are real tricky, but we don't have one to show here today. But um, just to, the best way to conceptualize that though, if you struggle to understand histiocytoid sweets, and I, I think I did for a long time, the way that it finally made the most sense to me is there are not, they are not probably histiocytes. They are actually neutrophils. They're just a little bit younger neutrophils. They're left shifted. So instead of having the well-developed multi-lobated nuclei, they look more like a single nucleus, um, like a band would, um, or a seg, you know, one of those kind of, uh, left shift neutrophils. And so that's the, they look and they stain like neutrophils, but they look kind of like histiocytes because they're not as, as fully developed. And that's why they can begin to look kind of like leukemia cells, which myeloid leukemia is really, really primitive the precursors of neutrophil, right? So that's where the overlap can come because the staining can be very similar. The look can be similar. And usually if I'm going to make a diagnosis of histiocytoid sweets, I'm going to tell you guys to do a CBC and watch the patient closely because I'm always worried about subtle leukemia cutis mimicking histiocytoid sweets. So 
And I think that's a good, a good general rule. If you get a diagnosis of histiocytoid sweets, keep a close eye on that patient, okay? If it responds like sweets and their CBC is, doesn't have blast, that's really good and reassuring, but just keep a close eye on them, okay? Just feel like that's a, a safe way to do things.